Welcome to Bed Crime Stories Podcast. I'm your host, T. And if true crime is your jam, and like me, you enjoy delving into unsolved cases, trying to figure out who done it, please consider subscribing. Good afternoon, my true crime friends. Today, I want to just touch on briefly the emergency scanner traffic. On the evening of June 15th, 2021, when Summer Wells was reported missing by her parents. Let's dive in. Radio scanner traffic from emergency dispatchers the night Summer Wells disappeared. Take a listen. The information shared in that communication came from Don Wells and his call to 911, which came in sometime around 626, 630, somewhere in that ballpark. If you had trouble hearing that clip, let me read what the dispatcher said. She says, You are en route to 110 Ben Hill Road off Beach Creek. It will be the first residence on your right. In reference to a missing four-year-old, the parents have called in, advised that the mother had went for a walk, came home, and now they can't find her. They have been yelling for her. She has been gone for about 10 minutes. End quote. We learn from dispatch communication that Don Wells doesn't know the age of his treasured baby girl, Summer Wells. He's in the ballpark if you consider being off by one year, mm, not a big deal. But I'd say making a mistake about your child's age when she's only five is a fairly egregious error, especially when you say how much your baby girl meant to you, how much she loved you, how worried you always were that something would happen to her. Don also tells the dispatcher that Candace went for a walk. However, in the Wells' first interview with a reporter, Candace Bly says this. I don't go on walks around here or runs because I'm scared of the bears and snakes and even the coyotes that are around here. Candace says she never goes for walks. How could Don get that part wrong if Candace is never in the habit of going for a walk? I'd have to assume that Don is lying about this detail. Why? Was it an attempt to make Candace's behavior prior to Summer going missing look innocuous, be such that no one could fault her for losing sight of her five-year-old daughter? Why didn't anyone ask Don about that detail? Don, why did you say your wife went for a walk on June 15th? 2021, right before Summer vanished, when you know that she never goes for walks around the property. Inquiring minds want to know. Don also said that Summer was missing for only about 10 minutes at the time when he made that call. That would mean that Candace realized Summer was missing at around 6.15 or 6.20. But the Wells neighbor, Jody Sue Brown, and her two kids who lived just across the street on a neighboring hill, said that they heard a strange scream or animal-like sound between 4.30 and 4.42 p.m. Take a listen. Jody Sue was in her cabin with her teenage kids, 19 and 14, waiting for any... We were kind of hyper alert because um, of property things that had happened the day before. So we were listening for the noise, everything was kind of quiet. The sale brought a plethora of people to their door, confused about which piece of land was for sale, leading to a dispute of property lines. While we were out at one point doing survey lines, and there was a flash of a car that went up Candace's on his driveway, something about it struck me wrong. She and her family next heard a truck door slamming and dismissed it as their neighbors. The next sound was harder to justify. About an hour and a half before Summer is thought to go missing, Jody Sue, her son, and her daughter heard something far more suspicious. A scream. Stop 
all three of us cold. Her daughter was the first to go to the cabin door. Then all three were there listening still. We heard just this kind of shrill, almost animalistic scream. Animalistic, but not an animal. I knew it was, you know, wrong. It wasn't a dog. It wasn't an animal. That vigilance kicking into overdrive. Jody Sue and her son went out to look for the source of the scream. My son and I decided to go out, look and see what we could see. We went back onto the bank, didn't see anything, didn't hear anything. They went on with their evening. The kids returned to being kids. Jody Sue has stated that never before in her time living on Ben Hill Road and in the Beach Creek community has she ever heard a sound like that. She stated it was not a mechanical sound. And she also said it was not a sound that she's ever heard any animal in the area make before. Hawkins County Sheriff Ronnie Lawson has said that this scream is unfounded. However, I personally think Lawson is wrong about this. I would say that if three people who live near the Wells property all report they heard an unusual sound, a scream, an animal cry, the sound of children, even if they belong to the same family, even if Jody Sue's partner is not such a nice guy, it should carry some weight, especially when a little girl living just across the road is later reported missing that same evening. If that strange scream is related to whatever happened to Summer, it occurred over an hour and a half before Don Wells told the authorities that Summer was missing. He said she was only missing for about 10 minutes when he called in. When the parents of a missing child say things that don't make sense or contradict themselves, when they are quick to dismiss their missing child and say they need to move on, when they're caught in lies, when they stop the line of communication with the authorities, it all points to one thing, their involvement in their child's disappearance. Until the next time on Bed Crime Stories. Like my content? Please hit the like button. It's a free way to say thank you.